Now people are yearning for a new type of tourism. It means that people are nowadays jade. Like this word, J-A-D-E, jade, and D means people are sick and tired of something. So they're now kind of skeptical and they are not easily influenced by something. So we call that jade, J-A-D-E-D. -E yeah. Like the, the gem, right? Jade is fei choi. Yeah. So you can also use this word to uh, a bit informal, so don't use it in geography. Uh, it means that like people are no longer satisfied by just going to a shopping mall, right? Just going to regular restaurant. People are no longer satisfied. So they demand something new, something different in order to attract attention. Because in this day and age of the social media era, everyone, or not everyone, like not a small number of people, let's put it this way, not a small number of people have short attention span, meaning they can only focus for a few seconds. If something is more than a few seconds, they get bored. Meaning if you want to gain attention of the people, like you want to catch their eyeballs, you better be dramatic in a short period of time. Meaning you better be very dramatic or exciting in the first three seconds. Because there's a three second rule, right? Meaning you either like it or you don't like it in the first three seconds. When you look at the TV ad, like on YouTube is five seconds, right? And after five seconds, you can't wait to press skip, right? It's like, yeah, let's quickly five seconds and then you press skip as if like even half a second more is wasting your life, right? Because time is life actually, right? If you think about time equals life because we all have a finite, like limited lifespan. So if you are spending an extra second on that boring ad, then you're wasting that extra half a second on your life. So, yeah. So it means that if the TV ad wants to attract your attention, it better attract your attention in that five seconds so that you will wa keep watching it. Yeah. So as a result, we say that people are now demanding something new in a very short period of time. Like a new shopping mall, a new coffee shop, maybe it get popular or it get talks about in the first week. But after the first week, nobody talks about it. And then something new comes along. Just like the, the gossip, right? Or the scandal. Like the celebrity scandal will get talked like a lot in the first few days. But after the first few days, people forgot about it. Like they're already on to something new. This is very difficult to get people's attention to something long enough. So always demanding something new. So as a result, we have the consequence of new types of tourism. So for example, something that they can do, something that is like an experience, like because nowadays, especially in Hong Kong and other big cities where the cost of living is relatively high, especially the property price, where many young people or, or not any young people, not a small number of young people, let's put it this way, think that it is impossible to afford a proper or a decent housing because it's just too expensive. It's not possible to afford it. If they want to afford it, they have to be the slave for the property for 40 years. And not a small number of people don't want to be like that. So, but they still make money, right? They still work, they get income. So instead of saving the money for the like deposit for the house, for the property, they instead adopt this lifestyle of YOLO. Right? You know what is YOLO? Yeah, it's whatever. You only live once, meaning live in the present, like spend on things you like, spend on experience. The latest generation, let's say, the 10s and 20 years old, like below 10 years old would be too, too young. So for the 10s and 20s, which I still belong to the 20s, but right? <laughs> that you don't think that I'm too old, like, like not a small number of people, again, prefer to 
buy experience versus buying goods. Like we talk about durable goods and consumable goods. Like consumable goods means you consume it and it's gone. Let's say food. You buy the food, you eat it, it's gone. Let's say you um, buy a firework. Like during uh, New Year, Chinese New Year, you buy a pack of firework, you burn it, it's gone. So these are called consumable goods. So durable goods means it is long lasting. You can use it for a long time. For example, you buy a phone, you buy a computer, you buy a tablet, you buy a, let's say like these kind of electronic devices. These are durable goods, meaning you can use it for a number of years, like keep using it. And people like young people, they now actually don't even buy goods. They think that these goods are too expensive. Like, and nobody knows I own these goods unless I keep posting them on social media, right? But people will be thinking, why you post this? Like, if you buy an iPhone that is not the, the latest model, then people will be thinking, oh, like, what's the point of showing off your phone? And so many people own these durable goods as well, right? If you think about, everyone got an iPhone basically nowadays. If you walk along the street, maybe someone gets a Samsung. But it, owning an iPhone doesn't differentiate someone from the other person. So they think that, oh, it doesn't represent me. But instead, if I buy experience, on one hand, I get to enjoy the experience. And on the other hand, I get to show it to people. And then those people who haven't experienced that you see that, oh, you try that. I haven't tried that. And then they will be jealous, right? Or maybe you show that, oh, I get to experience that. And because experience is one-off, you can keep showing something new, right? So it means that you would never lack material to post on your social media. Because let's say today you go to Disneyland, you post it. Then the next day you go to a fancy restaurant, you post it, and then let's say next week you go to a fancy cafe and you post it. And all these are not going to cost you a fortune. Meaning maybe going to Disney is expensive, but going to a fancy cafe, let's say it's only like 50 Hong Kong dollar per for a cup of coffee and you sit there for hours, right? So compared to buying an iPhone, which is close to 10,000 Hong Kong dollar, like you can go to a lot of fancy cafe and drink a lot of coffees and you can post a lot of stuff versus buying one iPhone and only post it once, right? You get it? Yeah, so it means that like people now, they like they value experience way more than other stuff. And this is why, or, or part of the reason why you see so many new cafe in Hong Kong, right? Because there's this trend about like Manqing, right? I don't know the English for that, but um, I think it's translate to Manfa Qinglin, right? Yao Manfa Qinglin, cultured young people, I guess. I don't know because I'm not one. It translate back to tourism, meaning people no longer enjoy normal shopping, normal restaurant. They want something unique. They want something that would be basically that would get, get them a lot of likes on social media. So a simple test of whether the experience is good enough is whether celebrity has tried that, right? So if celebrity has tried that and get a lot of likes, then people will try to do it. Because like we talk about we're in the era of mimetic desire, meaning Desire is not internal. Like you have a particular desire that it not that is not from yourself. But instead, you have that desire because you saw someone with that desire. So you took that guy or that person as your role model in that desire. So you have that desire as well. So very easy explanation would be why. Nike have the NBA stars to be the like to wear their sportswear, right? To wear their basketball shoes because they know 
if the NBA stars wear this sportswear, average basketball player will dream of, okay, if I want to play as well as those NBA stars, and if I wear those shoes, maybe it helps me to become like that, right? At least I'm wearing the same shoes. So it means that I am closer to being that NBA star, right? So these are all psychological. So you can see, we call that like mimetic desire. It means that your desire is from someone else's desire. So someone else's desire is from another person's desire. So it's all mimetic. That's why it becomes viral, right? If someone goes to um, a, a fancy cafe, other people or that social network of that person will go to the social cafe or on the social cafe, fancy cafe together or as a way to show that, well, if you go there, I can also go there, right? Or as if it is um, social norms or a recognition that you belong to that circle, right? If you go, don't go to that fancy cafe, you can't be called a Menting. You can't, you don't belong to that circle. So in order to have that sense of belonging to the circle, you have to do the same thing, right? It's like in your class, maybe you, you have experience, like if everyone drink Coca-Cola, you are more intent to drink Coca-Cola as well, right? If you're suddenly like, no, I drink only back Pepsi. I don't drink Coca-Cola. Then people will be looking at you why you're so picky, right? So something like that. So back to the point about like uh, tourism. Activity holidays, for example, like skydiving, bungee jumping, sport tourism. So, so you go another place to participate in a sport. Very common would be bicycle, marathon. Like you see marathon around the world and people around the world will go to different places to participate in the marathon. That is also part of it. Another type of sport tourism would be you are not active participating in that, but instead you are the spectator. You watch it, right? Let's say you watch NBA. Let's say you go to US, all the way to US, just to watch a live game. That is also sport tourism because the purpose of tourism is sports. That right? you want to watch the NBA game. Extreme sports like the BMX, right? Uh, uh, skydiving or whatever, like, like the extreme skiing or mountain bike, those kind of things like canoeing. These are extreme sports where you don't really get to do a lot in the local place usually, or maybe you get bored of it. And then role of media and promotion, YouTube, right? You see so many people on YouTube playing all these extreme sports or whatever activities, right? And as a result, you kind of want to do it yourself, right? You want to try at least, maybe not as extreme, but at least have a taste of that. So again, this is like the mimetic desire because you see someone doing it and you think, oh, if that person can do it, I can do it, right? So this is both um, could be beneficial or could be harmful because if you hurt yourself, then <laughs> maybe not as good. And then we also have uh, over here, media and promotion. Also the role of movies and dramas play a very important key contribution to this spread of experience because if you watched in the movie like all the stunts stunt plays or the, the lead actors or actresses are doing these extreme sports then you kind of try to fantasize oh yourself as the main character right so if you watch like james bond yeah so you would like probably admit yourself oh trying to be thinking oh what if i am like james bond right in that scene, maybe secretly. So like that, that is the role of movies, like Hollywood movies and dramas. So like soft culture. So as a result, it attracts people to do certain things and also consume certain products, right? That's why they pay a lot of money for the advertisement in the movie, right? The Gap Congo. Because they know people will consume it. Okay. Profit motives, yeah, just now we talk about it through some companies trying to attract people to do it, right? Maybe you will see like a ski resort 
giving you promotion, right? Maybe if you subscribe to the email and you get oh email from the ski resort saying, okay, we have a new discount, or maybe we the season opening is here, like we have opened for this season of skiing and you can come, right? So they always want people to go because when people go, they will consume, they will spend money so they can make profit. 